Nazca Lines workshop, sponsored by Acero Sarequipa, was held in November of 2007 in three different cities, Lima, Huancayo, Piura. This took place in three weeks, with three workshops each week. There were over 360 individual students that were able to participate in this project, which was to develop blacksmithing skills among the local population using inexpensive tools to create a sellable product for the tourist industry. Peru is filled with mysticism, sacred ruins, ancient history, amazing and diverse land masses which cover the entire spectrum of plants, animals, and climates. I chose the Nazca Lines as a theme for these bookends. Throughout this video, I'll be showing you how I made the bookends and also interspersed among it will be footage from the actual workshops. This video is really intended for beginning blacksmiths uh, and gives you some idea of what can be done with very simple tools. The hummingbird and Nazca lines are elements which I'm using to design these bookends. I chose to make bookends because they're small enough to fit inside of a suitcase and tourists who travel to Peru normally fly and then have to fly back home. So making something that is durable out of steel and small enough to pack away is the perfect type of item which a tourist would like to buy. Let's start with the Nazca Lines bookend layout. Basically there are four cuts that are needing to be done to create the base plate. Center punches are used to create the points and then we use a scribe to scribe the lines. After which we come back with a cold chisel that is used to actually mark on top of the scribe lines. This only inserts a certain amount of depth, but gives us enough depth so that later on we can come in with a hot cut and actually make the final cut. The difference between a hot cut and a cold cut is the angle in which the chisel is sharpened. The best advice I can give any beginning blacksmith is to strike while the iron is hot. This is a very important point because you only have 15-20 seconds in which the iron is hot when you first bring it out of the fire. You have to be ready to strike and get the work done. The same techniques are used to make the hummingbird tail feathers. The difference here is that you have four different cuts that are done within a one inch area. So you have to have very good layout and good cutting practices uh, using the hot cut. The wings are opened up and then the individual lengths are cut. Same technique again we use on the hummingbird wings, except this time we have three cuts the thicker section is cut first and bent to create the leg. Once these three sections are made, you're ready to forge the body of the hummingbird. Basically, you take uh, approximately two and a half to three inches from the end of the cuts, draw down to make the head, then you draw further down to make the beak. Once this is done, the wings are welded to the piece and you finally have a finished piece. So, now let's get back to the base plates. After making the cuts that are within these base plates, we have to come back and actually forge out another section. Basically what we want to do is to heat up the very center where the lines are coming together and from there we're going to take one of the shorter ends of the pieces 
and actually bend it to the side and draw it out, a nice long taper. Then the other two remaining sections will be folded up and squared off to give you the book support. Now the very basic Nazca Lines bookend is finished. We attach the hummingbird and we're done. We offered two finishes to the students, a copper sulfate patina or a WD-40 natural oil finish. The copper sulfate can be acquired at your hardware store and simply mixed into pure water. The piece is then dipped into it for 20 to 30 seconds, rinsed, and then a WD-40 is applied on top of it.